and welcome or welcome back to the Night Sky Knitting channel. My name is Rachel and I'm a knitter based out of Ottawa, Canada and today I would like to share a whole bunch of sweaters that are bringing me all of the knitting inspiration for this autumn. So I have a list of I think around 13 different patterns Absolutely, I will not be able to knit all of these this autumn or probably even this year. This is not a fall knitting plans video. This is a fall knitting, specifically sweater inspiration video because there have just been so many patterns that have appeared on my radar in the past few weeks that have really captured my heart and have gotten me really excited to get back to all the woolly wools and nice cozy knits for the upcoming cooler weather even if it hasn't exactly hit today and i can't really knit today because i completely blew out my elbows and i need to give them a break so i have decided instead to channel all of that energy <laughs> and enthusiasm for knitting into talking about it with you guys so most of these sweaters are already released i have a couple <laughs> that are still in the design process that I'm going to kind of very quickly talk about and show you guys because they're not out yet and it kind of feels weird to be like ah yes everybody look at this pattern but you can't knit it not yet and also because as much as sometimes patterns that are currently still in the creation process really really like sink their teeth into me and I get really excited about. I usually wait until I've seen it on an array of bodies and all the different tester versions before I really know if it's going to work for me. So with that, the sweaters that are currently still in testing that I really like the look of and I'm excited to see more of and wait for them to be released are the, the, the first of which is the Care Sweater, K-E-R-R, -R, by Rebecca of the Crea Band Knitting Podcast. I just finished knitting her Cargill sweater. Like, it's literally, I was, earlier this afternoon, I was weaving in my ends, and I have been so impressed with Rebecca's ability to not only write pattern really clearly, but the shaping, <laughs> the fit, the gauge, they're all just chef's kiss perfection. I'm quite impressed that this is her first ever pattern whatsoever. And I saw the care and I thought, ooh, that looks really, really nice. But then now having the experience of knitting one of Rebecca's patterns, I am all the more excited to see it come out. I really, really love the band of color work going around the abdomen and onto the arms. I feel like most of the color work sweaters I see have a color work yoke and then maybe a little bit around the hems or around the bottom ribbing, but not kind of in the middle like Rebecca has done. And that I think is a very fun, fresh take on it that still feels very classic. And I really like the drop shoulder kind of almost sweatshirt type fit of it. The only reasons why I am not like eagerly awaiting the test call to apply myself is one, I am so burnt out on drop shoulder patterns. I think I need a little bit more time before I sign up for one. Two, I don't have the yarn and I do have lots of other yarn. I've been buying a ton recently and I think it's important to prioritize knitting things with stuff I already have. Another thing I think is really interesting about this pattern is Rebecca anticipated how by focusing the color work around the torso, like the abdomen, you might encounter some more issues between people of different sizes. So she's drafted a version for people with longer torsos and people with shorter torsos. And as a, I don't even have a short torso, I'm just short in general, that I find that really appealing. So. That is the first sweater that I am feeling quite inspired by and ready and in position to kind of continue being able to get a lot of excitement and joy by seeing them. The second is the Pippin sweater by Sophie Hemmings, aka the Knit Pearl Girl. It is this raglan design with, I think it's all over sand stitch. 
that is knit in like I think a sport a heavy sport to a light DK weight that I just think is so stunning and so classic. I think it is a great combination of knits and pearls with a lot of techniques and shaping that I find really fun and enjoyable. I have my laptop here with a bunch of the sweaters but really it's just to kind of help balance the light coming in from the window on a very bleary day so every so often I keep tapping it so it doesn't go to sleep but I really like a raglan construction for fun of knitting and for the enjoyment of the process and also I think they look really nice on me. I really like the kind of feminine shoulder hugging fit that I typically get from the raglans I have knit so that really appeals to me and I like texture. I don't know if that necessarily means cables and lace. I have knit very, well I would say not a lot of cable or lace for myself in terms of garments but I do love different combinations of knit and pearl texture. I love ribbing. I really enjoyed the dip stitch on the cargill. And I think the Pippin will be a like just a kind of knockout winner of something that I can throw on and wear in most situations. And also just interesting enough that I will not get bored of any type of Oliver stockinette, but enough where you're going to memorize what you're doing and, and you don't have to have the pattern in front of you all the time. The third pattern that is something I am following the hashtag, you know, stalking the testers, seeing how it comes along, is the Generous Sweater Light by Wise Knits, W-I-E-S-E -E Knits, who is, I think, a Danish designer, absolutely Scandinavian. I think her posts are in Danish, but I'm not well versed enough in the different Scandinavian languages to tell if it's Danish or Norwegian. And from what I can tell, it is like a DK weight version of an existing chunky sweater. It's a very, very simple stitch pattern. I mean, it's an all stockinette sweater except it has what looks to be a saddle shoulder construction so you have those two bands kind of going horizontally is that even is that even a good description hopefully you guys notice saddle shoulder so i'm not confusing you saddle shoulder construction along with a raglan which like i said i i find that a very flattering fit for me and something i really enjoy knitting and then that raglan line no and then that saddle shoulder line continues all the way down the sleeve and so I, from the original designer's sample, get the impression that it would be fun to knit techniques wise. So the final result will be of a sweater with very clean lines, very geometric, very simplistic, but I think rather wearable. My one hesitation with that one is I did comment on a recent post in English and she responded in English which was very good of her because everything else was in Danish but I asked what kind of sizes would be available and it looks like it only goes up to a 51 and a quarter inch bust which is not ideal but something I kind of do keep running into with Scandinavian designers I shouldn't say that I think it's probably just the ones I have that have come across my desk uh, of late however I, yeah, it's unfortunate. So we'll see. Maybe the size range will be, maybe the size range will be extended in the future, and I will certainly comment and ask. But for your awareness, the Pippin and the Care sweaters both look like they're going to be fully size inclusive. I think they're like a 61 inch bust, which what is that in centimeters? 165, I think. Is that true? Ballpark around there, and that's another reason why I'm very excited for them. For the sweaters that actually exist in pattern form for us to purchase and knit already, I have a bunch. First, I would like to talk to you guys about the Areti Pullover by Geraldine Yang. And if that name is familiar, I'm pretty sure that is the creative mind behind the Wandering Flock yarn brand. 
And this is a pattern that was published in the winter 2019 edition of Pom Pom Magazine, which I think is issue number 31, but don't quote me on that. I do know that it's winter 2019 and it is by Geraldine Yang, the Already Pullover. It is a turtleneck raglan with these really interesting intarsia, like almost like slashes going on the body and with some really cozy looking bishop sleeves. I, so spoiler alert, if you are going to watch my next podcast episode, I got this issue of Pom Pom Magazine. There was a sale, I bought it. I liked a lot of the patterns in it because once again, I, I've been really enjoying texture. And I think if I were to knit this, I would do it with a double folded collar instead of a turtleneck. And I would do a light or medium gray main color with the accent color being some maybe scrap worsted forest green. And or maybe I would do using some leftover fuzzy pink yarn because a lot of the effect from that intarsia kind of jagged edge going in comes from the designer using two different kind of textures of yarn. And I don't know if you can see in the photos, but the pink stripes, slashes, gashes, I don't know what you want to call them, are much fluffier because it's a wool mohair blend yarn for those. And then the rest is a standard wool. And I think that really gives a lot of opportunity for stash busting. I already can think of several single skeins of worsted or kind of equivalent yardage in terms of like fluffy yarns like mohair or surrey alpaca that I could use for those sections that I think would be really effective and a very great kind of cozy deep winter sweatshirty comfy cozy type sweater. I also think it would be really cool to do with maybe a special skein of a multicolor or variegated colorway. I think that would be really, really nice. But I think you guys know for, for my garments, I tend to play a little bit safer. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And I've never knit in Tarja in the round. And I think that would be a very valuable skill to learn. I do a lot of striped color work in accessories, specifically socks, but I've only done in Tarja twice. In my life one was for the most basic type of intarsia in a knit top and then the other was pretty also pretty basic intarsia for a crochet tapestry so that is a, a skill i would like to expand upon and i think that this comfy cozy pullover is exactly the way to do it also in that same edition of pom pom magazine is the saltings sweater by sarah solomon and the sweater is on the cover of that issue and it pulled me in immediately. I think one, in part because I'm going through a massive pink sweater phase right now. And two, because I think those vertical cables going down and the overall fit of the garment was very, very interesting to me. And it looks again, both very stylish, but not very trendy in the way that I think I would maybe be able to wear this sweater for like a decade and hopefully feel very comfortable. I was looking at the construction and it looks really interesting. And at first I thought, oh no, a drop shoulder, you, you could not pay me to do so, but it's done in a really interesting way that I think would be a very fun and engaging project to tackle. This is a DK weight project and I really like the way that a lot of projects on Ravelry paired it with a either used an, a, a yarn that wasn't very round and well defined or paired it with a fluff in order to kind of soften the look of that texture which is I think what you don't normally do with cables or things like this but I think really add to the overall look and feel of it. I think this would look really, really cute with some of my tapered leg trousers. I have a couple pairs that I wear to work that I think would look really well with this. I think it's kind of a really nice, elegant sweater and it looks like it'll be a really, really fun project. I think it'll represent a big challenge for me 
to take on and I am looking forward to doing so. And both of the sweaters from this issue of Pom Pom are knit, sorry, are inclusive up to a 60 inch bust. So that's nice too, for your information. From there, I would like to also highlight the Kayo, Kyo sweater, K-Y-O by Riko Kuramura, which is, I think, a little bit similar in terms of look as the saltings. It's the same kind of like long vertical type of cables, except these are done with caliper cables and overall is a bit more of a streamlined look. I think it's a sport weight, so a little bit more drapey and lightweight than the saltings and overall I think with a little bit less fuss. Not that I'm against fuss. I think an interesting detail that really caught my eye beyond how well it seems to fit everyone who made it is it has these kind of lace cutouts but there's a lace design effect on the top of the back that I think is really interesting and I don't see that kind of thing a lot. I think often you see a very similar front and back and I really liked that detail. I think A, it's good for temperature regulation in a hot sweater when you're maybe on the move or running in between frigid outdoor temperatures and overly heated indoor temperatures, but I just thought it was very, very interesting. And this sweater goes up to a 3XL and I think around a 52 or 54 inch finished bust. I also, having recently finished my field day jacket, and being back in a kind of hybrid work environment in a very air-conditioned office have been on a little bit of a cardigan inspiration kick. I haven't cast on another one, but I'm very much planning to. I think a cardigan, a lightweight DK one, is pretty ideal for the kinds of clothes I wear to the office to throw on top and keep me warm. And one that I found very recently that I think is going to be the one that I cast on is the Luz, Luz cardigan by Emily Louise. The Luz, it's spelled L-U-Z or Z. And it is a DK weight raglan round neck jumper. The sample is knit in two strands of mohair. I would knit it in one strand of wool and it has just a wonderful look to it. Uh, it has a vertical integrated button band, which is something that it turns out I really like in a, in a cardigan, both in terms of finished aesthetics and also construction. I don't hate picking up stitches. I think as a result of the choice of patterns I've knit in the last six months, I've become quite accustomed to it and I think I can do it to my level of satisfaction with the, the look at the end, but I don't love doing it and I think having to pick up a whole bunch of stitches for a horizontal button band I would not like. So in terms of enjoyment of knitting, and I also really just like the look of a vertical button band regardless of if it's rib or it's a double knit one. And so I am quite picky when it comes to cardigan patterns and this one hits every box. I like that it's DK. I like that it's fitted as opposed to a flowy kind of relaxed weekend cardigan. I like that it's a raglan and I like the round neck and the vertical button band. And I think if I was a practical person, it would be one of my priorities to knit sooner rather than later this autumn. So this is definitely one that I will be casting on, not just one of the ones I'm dreaming about and gaining creative energy from. So yeah, uh, not super exciting in terms of appearance, but I do think very effective in terms of technique and practicality for and what I'm looking for for my everyday life. From there, Knitting for Olive has just announced either they have released or are about to release in English their chunky cable sweater, which I saw and I thought that looks that looks very, very nice. I really like uh, all over vertical cables with breaks for either rib or stockinette. 
it just feels like a very wearable kind of cable that could still be viewed as professional or put together as opposed to a chunky oversized classic cable jumper which makes me think cozy morning in night at a cabin more like weekend vibes it is knit with three strands of mohair and i'm waiting to see more people knit them knit that pattern with not three strands of mohair to get an idea of how it fits and drapes without that super loose and airy fiber choice but i really like the look of it i think it is kind of a nice alternative to what is it the my favorite things sweater number 15 or 16 that has the all over cables and i don't know i just really like it i think it's really nice and on the cardigan kind of and another for the cardigan category of this video is the mavs jacket m-a-v-e-s jacket which is by i think her name is i think the designer's name is sharon deuce it is another scandinavian one but i'm, I'm pretty sure the pattern is available at least also in english maybe not maybe i'm maybe i've just told myself that through the power of wishful thinking but it is this really cool kind of loose flowy collared pocketed it almost kind of feels like a bomber jacket in terms of fit and vibe and every version i've seen has come out so nicely it looks so cool it looks almost kind of it, it feels very like cool girl cool girl out in the city and while i think the cardigan that i just finished the field day kind of functionally fits the same kind of need in my wardrobe but this is not an immediate priority i love seeing so many other versions and i just think it looks like it's so much fun to knit and it's uh, the result is quite enjoyable for me personally i'm pretty sure it's either a dk or an erin or sorry a worsted weight project i think it's either a 4.5 or a 5 millimeter needle size that you use for it and i've seen it in so many different colors i think it is a really nice like literal jacket that you could wear out as your final outerwear layer in the transitional months and i think it looks nice the one lace addition to this list is the esme pullover by svetlana volkova who is also known as tweety sheep I think that's her brand or store name and definitely her instagram handle she's a ukrainian designer who does a lot of in my opinion very beautiful and feminine designs and i really like the all over lace of the esme i saw someone else knit it in pink fluffy yarn and it oh it just spoke to me <laughs> but i know that i don't need another pink fluffy sweater i just finished one but i think knitting it in a size that would give a little bit of positive ease and wearing it with my hair up as i'm studying with some coffee would be quite the vibe i'm pretty sure this is also a dk weight pattern and it is available in a finished chest circumference from somewhere around 28 inches to i think 55 and this is one where I'm I'm wondering if because something doesn't need to be stockinette for it to be wearable and practical and considered an everyday garment for me, but I'm wondering if I would feel too dressed up in a lace sweater in my day-to-day -day life. Would I wear this to class? Probably. I wear a lot of things to class. Would I wear this to the office? Oh, but it's just so beautiful. And I think I enjoy lace enough to tackle an all-over lace sweater especially since to my uninitiated eye it doesn't look like a super complicated repeat and i think with my limited lace experience i would be able to tackle this but it would be a rather engaging project i also would like to highlight that way back in i think march i did a giveaway where i asked people to share underrated designers and their opinions 
and this is one of the designers that was highlighted and I'm very very glad to see it because I really really enjoy her aesthetic. And the final garment on my kind of knitting inspiration for this fall list is another all over lace pattern. This is the Athicus Acanthus sweater by Twin Knits. The brand, the designers are twins and that's their handle on Instagram and I have not seen them publish with their names so I should know them but I don't and I apologize for that which is another all over lace top down sweater that I really also enjoy the look of. I follow the hashtag and it looks so beautiful all the finished projects that come through. This is also a DK weight project and it looks nice in all sorts of different textures of yarn and the same as the Esme I see it and I think that would be a, f a very engaging, enjoyable knit for the process of it. It is only available in up until a 2XL, and so I think I would maybe go for the Esme over it, but that doesn't mean that I don't find it very visually appealing and imagine that I would get a lot of joy out of knitting it. So those are the sweaters that are more or less on my... I'm not even just like a little bit my two knit list, but really just my dream knit list. The things that are giving me a lot of joy and inspiration and creative energy this autumn as I gear up for the colder months. And I imagine if you follow the rest of my videos, you will see at least one or two of them making an appearance over the next coming months. So I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to let me know what patterns are calling to you these days. What are you really excited to cast on for this autumn? I am very interested, feel free to share. I love, uh, I love adding to the everlasting list of things that I don't have enough time to knit. So, okay, I hope you have a great rest of your day.